UN officials say Sudan is at a breaking point. As talks began in Geneva, the medical charity Doctors Without Borders, known by its French acronym MSF, said the besieged Sudanese city of El Fashe may have to shut down due to intensive bombardment. Nicholas Hissam, the special representative of the Secretary General and the head of the United Nations mission in South Sudan, briefed the Security Council Wednesday about South Sudan and the indirect impact of the Sudan conflict. A perfect storm is gathering in South Sudan as regards its humanitarian and economic outlook. This is reflected by a protracted humanitarian crisis founded on chronic food insecurity, a spillover of the Sudan conflict into South Sudan, resulting in the movement so far of 750,000 refugees and internally displaced people, uncertainties in the face of critical political events necessary for a peaceful transition, a rapidly deteriorating economy exacerbated by the rupture in critical oil infrastructure and oil revenue, and the potential for once-in-a-lifetime flooding in September. Any one of these elements on its own presents a significant challenge. When taken together, it could push the country to a tipping point. Nicola Hissem is the special representative of the Secretary General and the head of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. Military personnel from the United States and the Botswana Defense Force are wrapping up workshops aimed at strengthening relations as well as building the capacity of local forces. One workshop is focusing on better integrating women into Botswana's army, addressing issues like sexual harassment and the need for tailored equipment. From Habaruni, Nkudise Dube reports. This workshop in Habaroni Falls under an initiative led by the U.S. Army Southern European Task Force Africa, not as CTAF AF to better address the role of women serving their countries. A CTAF AF military operations officer, Major Taisha Barnes, says women in the military face challenges that could potentially limit the roles they play. She says the objective of the exchanges with the U.S. and Botswana Defense Force soldiers is to find out how to overcome these hurdles. One of the big challenges is letting women open or broaden their horizons and putting them into a box on things that they can do. Um, other challenges is not letting women rise to the occasion. Um, we have made several changes in the U.S. over the last 10 to 15 years to accommodate women based on body type with changes in uniform, um, just to help women feel more comfortable within the military. Bans elaborated on concerns surrounding army uniforms, for example, and military equipment. They've all given their perspective on the changes of uniforms, such that in the U.S. we also had issues with the fit, improper fit and wear of our vests when it came to shooting and injuring females as, instead of helping us. Um, another issue we had 10 years was the learning that we didn't weigh, women didn't weigh enough to actually properly break, break in boots. So by giving these lessons learned to Botswana, it, we're hoping that they will um, kind of learn from some of our mistakes to prevent injuries to the women. Local Army Major P. Sergio acknowledged that women in the Army still face challenges. Sergio voiced hope that interactions with the U.S. Army will prove helpful. In our culture, men were, were, were believes that women cannot join the Army because it's tough and we are soft, we are not masculine. People are not... Um, always ready or they are not quick to change so it's something that it will take time for everyone to accept that women uh, have joined the army and they are doing good the u.s ambassador to Botswana, howard van franken says it is essential to afford women equal opportunities in the military it is a kind of a of, a, of an approach to problem solving that incorporates everyone's uh, strengths uh, and, and enables us to bring everyone into uh, into the equation on an equal basis. I think it's absolutely essential that in order to tackle the problems that we face in the 21st century in security, uh, we need everyone to com contribute. High Court in Kampala has made a landmark ruling in a case against former lead of opposition Matthias Impuga and backbench commissioners that were awarded shillings 1.7 billion as a service award. 
Justice Douglas Kalekona Singiza ruled that the decision dated 6th May 2022 to award the leader of opposition in parliament, Honorable Mathias Simpuga, shillings 500 million and three other commissioners, UGX, 400 million each as a service award was approved by parliament and formed part of the budget presented by the executive as required by the Public Finance Management Act. According to Justice Carrie Corner, the allowances of members of the parliament commissioner are determined by the commission with the approval of parliament as prescribed by section 42 of the administration of the parliament act court further ruled that the service award was approved by parliament in the appropriation bill under the title ex glacia for political leaders the judge emphasized the question the payment was approved by parliament in the appropriation bill under the title ex gratia for political leaders. The fact that this vote formed part of the Appropriations Act is proof that the Minister of Finance had the opportunity to scrutinize the payment and that parliament approved the ex gratia vote. However, court has directed the secretary to treasurer to probe and discipline the clerk to parliament Adolf Mwesigwa for his involvement in the contested service award. Parliament awarded shillings 500 million to former LLP Matthias Impuge and 400 million each to commissioners Solomon Sirani MP Bukoli County Central Pro Simbawazi MP Rwanda and Esther Afoyochan, Zombo MP. The service award raised the controversy at Parliament and in the public, prompting some legislators to call for the censure of all beneficiaries of the service award. MP Theodore Sekikubo, the leader of the Centura motion, handed over the motion to Centura, Mpuga, and three backbench commissioners to the clerk to parliament, Adolf Moesigua. The motion was signed by 189 members of parliament.